Hey, what's going on YouTube? In this video, I'm going to be torture testing my EOTech 553 mounted on a Colt 6920 with an M4A1 barrel and a Daniel Defense RIS-2 because there is an ongoing and far-reaching controversy in the firearms optic industry regarding EOTech being deceptive about their product's ability to perform at extreme temperatures in that the optics don't have as consistent performance in extreme cold or extreme heat according to testing done by the U.S. government and U.S. SOCOM issuing a warning about continued use of EOTech optics. The issue is apparently significant enough that a lot of law enforcement and special weapons units have canceled their orders for EOTech optics. What I think is the most sketchy part of this development is EOTech's deception in that they knew about this issue for several years and they set aside money to settle the lawsuit. They did settle the lawsuit, I believe, the same day that it was filed for $26 million. And they are offering an RMA for customers, no questions asked. So I'm going to be torture testing the optic by dipping it in dry ice and see if I can get it down to at least negative 30 degrees to test how well the optic holds zero and is durable in those conditions. However, I will have to wrap the optic in some plastic because metal on dry ice contact is not very pleasant. So yeah. As discussed very briefly previously, the test weapon is going to be a Colt 6920 with an M4A1 profile heavy barrel and the optic is going to be mounted across the receiver onto the handguard which is a big no-no for most rail systems but if there is any rail system that can handle an optic mounted on it it's the RIS-2 because it's robust enough to be used as a mounting platform for the M203 grenade launcher so without further ado let's get testing
50 yards, a little bit to the left, but pretty consistent. I think I'm going to give it one turn. Actually, no, I'm not going to touch it at all. So this is point of aim, point of impact, 12 shots. And now to take a look at the reticle. Yes, the gun is empty to pull this lock back. Okay, there is a reticle. No distortion, no excessive bloom, no excessive pixelation. Alright, the Aerotech is now completely submerged. And I'll go play with my Glock for a little bit. Then come back and see if it can get down to about negative 30 or so. Alright, so I may have left it a little bit too long. Oh, wow, perfect. Minus 40. Go. The body is about minus 33. The lens is about minus 39. How much is the base? Minus 47. Okay, so the base is a little bit colder than the advertised temperature. What about around the battery compartment? So the battery not quite as cold as the other areas but still really, really cold. Okay, I have it mounted on the same rail slot. The arms levers, a little stiff, but still really good to go. Still more condensation. Yep, having rounds in the chamber. Yep, it's condensating again. I had to wipe it off between shots. I'm kind of using occluded eye aiming here.
right, moment of truth. The grouping I know for certain is not going to be really tight because <coughs> I rushed it to maintain the sight picture before everything condensed. But if we're on a Okay, so yeah, that shows you the government and SOCOM testing was right. Big wandering zero when at frozen temperatures. Okay, so let's go over the results in more detail. Functionally, the EOTech seems to be fine. The reticle, as you can see, has no evidence of extreme distortion, pixelation, or blurriness. If there is any, it's due to how my camera is focusing. But even at the minus 33 degrees or so, the reticle was still pretty crisp. I just couldn't get a good picture of it because of the extreme level of condensation. The test that we did is not perfect science because we only had a sample size of one and we only had one trial, but let's talk about possible sources of error. What about parallax? Well, I was aiming through a magnifier and you have to have reasonably consistent head position to get proper eye relief on the magnifier and I was aiming at 50 yards where parallax's effect should be diminished. So parallax is a minor factor, if at all. How much of a factor could removing the optic and remounting it have affected the mean point of impact? Well, the ARMS quick detach system has been shown across several optics platforms to be reliable in repeating the point of impact within one MOA after remounting. So even at the worst level of error that you can get from the arms mounting system, it still can't account for all of the discrepancy and mean point of impact. What about how the glass kept fogging up and I had to aim with occluded eye aiming? Well, even though the group size is not nearly as consistent as the group size here, it's still somewhat of a grouping. So even though my precision was lacking because of how quickly I had to get my shots in because the glass fogged up, I still got what is an average point of impact way away from the average point of impact on the first shoot and see target. It's very concerning how much the average point of impact shifted. These are six inch shoot and see targets and even without using a ruler, you can see that the mean point of impact drifted by about three inches. So at 50 yards, extrapolating over to 100 yards, that's about six MOA difference at extreme cold, which is even further than the plus or minus four US SOCOM and the government have tested the extreme temperature performance of the EOTech shifting zero to be. I was shooting wolf gold ammo and even though this is economy grade ammo, a rifle that likes it can get one and a half to two inch groups at 100 yards. So the discrepancy in main point of impact can't have been affected that much by choice of ammunition. How much was personal skill a factor? You were shooting off of a bench at 100 yards. Anybody can shoot reasonable size groups off of a bipod on a bench with a match trigger, Hyperfire HyperTouch 24C at 50 yards. So personal skill can have accounted for that much of a discrepancy in mean point of impact. How much could all of the sources of error added together have played into the margin of error? Even stacking everything like let's say you had the maximum amount of parallax error maximum amount of error attributable by ammunition maximum amount of error attributed by personal skill even then i mean this is three moa no sorry three inches meaning six moa at 100 yards which is well beyond the acceptable ranges what if people are fighting in you know seeing current events unfold what if people are deployed to 
northern Russia? How are the EOTechs going to perform? And it's very concerning because this model is the EOTech 553, and this model, along with the EXP S30, are issued as part of the SOPMOD Block 2 kit for the M4A1. If it were an EOTech 512, maybe there would be a little bit more leniency in the performance at extreme conditions, but seeing as this is the EOTech 553, it could be issued, well the tan version, if it was tan, it could be issued to somebody who's in special operations to be actually used in combat theater. So that's very concerning that even a premium EOTech model would have these problems. So am I personally going to continue to use EOTech optics? Definitely not. I'm going to be seeking an RMA for this model. I didn't abuse it. I only used it within the operational temperatures that it was advertised as being reliable within. Even though I like the EOTech technology, I've been a long-standing fan of EOTechs, but I just really am put off by how they've treated their civilian and military and law enforcement customers in not being straightforward with their optic performance. So probably be switching to either a Trijicon or an Aimpoint. But I hope you liked this video. I hope it gave you some perspective. Again, it's not perfect science because we only have a sample size of one and we only did one trial, but it is an additional data point to corroborate USOCOM and government testing of EOTech optic performance. Thank you guys very much for watching. My name is David and I'll see you in the next video.